you may have noticed the squirrels. When they get startled, they just chirp, but then they keep chirping, sometimes for an hour at a time. One little stimulus and they're gone for a whole hour. That's where our minds can be, too. One thing can happen and the mind just keeps talking and talking and talking and talking about it, weighing itself down. And where is the suffering coming from? Well, it's coming from the fact that we're talking about it. The actual event is past. But we dig it up and keep using it to burn ourselves. So it's important that you realize where, when the mind is suffering, where the suffering is coming from. It's not coming from things outside as much as it's coming from things inside, the mind's own chatter. I was just reading yesterday about someone who's a scientismist saying that you know, the mind doesn't really talk to itself, it's just neurons firing. And you wonder, you say, well, who is he talking to at night when he's sitting with his head talking to himself? The mind is always talking. Whether the scientists can find the, the electrons that are doing this or not, that's not the issue. The fact is that you're creating suffering for yourself. You know for sure. What they don't know, that's up to them. But you know that you're suffering, and you can do something about it. You can learn how not to add that extra suffering on top. The Buddha's images of someone being shot by an arrow and then shooting himself with another arrow. Although we don't shoot ourselves with just one arrow, it's many arrows. They keep coming back and coming back. And of course, when you've got an arrow in you already and then you try to shoot yourself with another arrow, that makes the, worst, the first arrow worse. So we just keep creating more and more trouble for ourselves. So one of the things we have to learn how to do is how to change the conversation in the mind. That's what when the Buddha talks about, verbal fabrication, direct a thought and evaluation. That's how we talk to ourselves. We direct our thoughts to something and then we evaluate it, good, bad, whatever. The Buddha says, instead, turn it to a good object, like the breath. Think about the breath, evaluate the breath. Get involved with the breath. As long as you're going to be talking to yourself, talk to yourself about the breath. See what you can do about it. Because the breath is something you can change. It's not like the temperature outside. We can't put in order for you know, a few degrees off at night so we can get it cooled cool down a little bit. Whatever the weather is going to be, that's what it's going to be. But we can do something about how the mind is creating suffering around it. So you can focus your attention on the breath, and you can change that. You can make the breath a lot more comfortable. You can think of where in the body is the coolest spot. Or focus on that. And then let the coolness grow, just the same way that we let the breath energy spread. Let the coolness spread through the body. It may not do anything about what's happening outside, but it does change the landscape inside. And that's the important thing, because that's where all the suffering is happening. So when you find yourself talking about things that make you miserable, remember, you don't have to talk about them. Talk about something that you can actually make a change in, something you can do something about. And one of the things you can do something about is change the state of your mind here in the present moment. And the breath gives you a handle on how to do that. <laughs> 